Hello everyone. Uh, this is a short video demonstrating the uh, Eve XML API uh, we released today as a Google Script Apps library. Uh, it makes it really easy to make API calls uh, directly from your Google Docs spreadsheets or Docs or whatever. And so this video is just going to cover uh, the basic layout of the library and then show a few simple examples of how to use it. So what I've got on the screen here is the library itself. Uh, we have links on the EveKit uh, website uh, to this file, as well as other ways to get the uh, the code. We have also have published the code on uh, our GitHub page, so you can pull it there. You don't have to use the code as a uh, Google Apps Script library. That's an experimental feature, so I don't know how stable it is. Uh, you can always just cut and paste the code and drop it right into your uh, script project if you want to do that. Uh, so just quickly going over the code, uh, there's a bunch of preamble in the front here. Uh, one important object is this API auth object. Uh, you use this to cache credentials for most of the calls that you make, and we'll see that in a second in the, the demo. Uh, and then if you scroll down a bit more, there's basically three important sections you need to worry about, uh, which are the, the three API sections. Uh, so we have right now an account API, which are just the two account calls. A character API, which were all of the character calls, and you'll notice by the way that each of these calls takes an auth object. Uh, that's the auth credentials that you, we talked about above. Uh, and then finally, uh, scrolling a little bit further down, there is the corporation API. So these are the, all the corporation API calls, and they work more or less the same way. And if you look at just one of these, uh, there's some gobbledygook here. You can look at the functions if you're really interested in what they're doing. But essentially, most things return a, a JavaScript object that captures what the XML uh, values are being returned. So in this case, uh, this is the corporate account balances call. Uh, you pass in your auth object, uh, and then what you get as a result is an array of account balance objects. Uh, and the account balance object just takes the XML rows from the account balance XML uh, API call and makes it into a JavaScript object. So just to go through uh, that particular example, if you scroll to the bottom of the corp uh, API here, you'll get into the actual objects that are used for the results. Uh, so for account balance, that's right here. Basically, we take the object that we get from the, the rather the XML object we get from the API call and make three fields, an account ID, an account key, and a balance. And again, these are the functions that uh, we wrote to do this. You can read the code if you're interested. But basically, they just uh, parse the values out of the XML and put them into this object. So uh, essentially, all of the API calls here will return uh, Java objects that pretty, or JavaScript objects rather, that pretty closely mimic what the XML rows are showing. Uh, these are all encapsulated in a response object that's right here. So. The response object captures the header information out of the XML call, so the version, the current time, and uh, when it's cached until. Uh, in cases where there is an error, there will also be an error object set with the code and the error code. But if there is no error, then the actual result of the call uh, will be stored in a field called result, and then the type actually depends on which AP call, API call you're making. OK, so that's the basics of, of the library. Uh, there's many different ways you can use this, as I uh, mentioned before. So uh, one way to use it is to just uh, cut and paste this code directly into your script or some subset of this code. Um, the you can the, the this particular file I'm looking at right now is uh, shared uh, from our uh, drive, and uh, there's a link on the website, so you can grab it directly if you want to do that. Uh, or you know you can grab it from our GitHub page as well. But the other more interesting way that you can use this code is to actually pull it in as a uh, Google Apps Script library. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So what I've done here, I'm just switching to a real simple spreadsheet. Uh, I've made a simple spreadsheet, uh, and again, this there's a link to this available on on our website as well, where I have uh, places to put a key, a V code, and a character ID. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And I should mention while we're here that the character ID is only required for character API calls. It's uh, optional for 
the account and uh, the corporation IPI calls. So that's that's my uh, authentication information there, my access key information rather. And then uh, if we go to the script here, what I've written is first a real simple on open function which just adds a menu item uh, under EveKit for loading the data. And when you select that, you'll call this function down here, which basically retrieves all the credentials from uh, the spreadsheet. And now I'm ready to make a call. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pull in the uh, actual library uh, as a, uh, Eve, a uh, Google Apps Script library. And so the way you do that is you go to Resources, uh, and then you go to Libraries. And now it's going to ask you for a project key for the library. So uh, on the website, we've posted what our key is. But uh, for this demo, I'm going to show you how to find it directly from the file. So if we go back to the actual library file, if you go to File, and you go to Project Properties, you'll see the project key right here. So you just pull that out, and then go back to your script and put it in here and say Select. OK, so it's found our library. Uh, the next thing we need to do is select a version. There's only one right now, so it's a pretty easy choice. Uh, and then you need to select an identifier, and this is basically the name of a variable um, that will represent your library in your script, so you'll be able to use this as a, a prefix for all your calls. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that as the default for now and hit Save. So the cool thing about making this a uh, Google Apps Script library is that now you'll get command line uh, complete, or rather uh, completion uh, when you type in the script here. So what we're going to do for the demo here is um, we'll make a real simple call. Uh, we'll call, uh, let's say, the character sheet call and print some of the fields out. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll make an auth object. And what that's going to be is an instance of the API auth class that I showed uh, in the main library file. Um, but since we pulled this in as a library, now uh, we'll get completion. Uh, so I can just scroll down and pick the function that I want, and then put in uh, the appropriate fields. So these are just fields I'm pulling uh, from up here that we, we already pulled out of the spreadsheet. OK, that's that. And now to get the actual sheet, uh, let's make a sheet variable, we're going to call the uh, character sheet function. And again, uh, we get our completion here, so we can scroll down and find it. All the character methods start with uh, char, char. So uh, let's see if I can find it a little faster. Oops. So we want char sheet right there. And uh, we're going to pass in our, our auth object. Uh, we just created. And that's basically it for using the API. Uh, so uh, to show that this works, let's do something simple here. So um, let's take a look at our spreadsheet again. I think I'll store, let's store the results here. I'll put, let's say, that the name of the field and the value of the field here and so on. So let's make a row variable. We'll start on row 5. And uh, Let's see. Um, let's pull out some of the header information. So just to refresh your memory here. We'll pull out uh, the version, the current time, and cached until. Uh, so we'll use current row and the first column. And we'll set that to version. And then we'll pull out the actual version. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the editor here isn't smart enough to know that the result that's coming back is going to be a character sheet. So it can't pull out, or sorry, rather a response. And so it can't pull out the version for you. Uh, so there's no completion there. You have to know the format of the object. OK, and then uh, we'll do the same thing for uh, current time. Uh, 
and lastly for cached until. Okay, so that's the basic header information. And then uh, to pull out the sheet, uh, well, let's pull out um, maybe the name and the character ID. Uh, so to do that, uh, you have to go one level deeper. If you recall uh, from the file here, uh, there's a, in the response there's a result field. That's where the actual character sheet will be stored. So to do that, um, we'll write a name. Sheet and then results and then name and last one here sheet dot result dot character ID. Okay, if I uh, haven't made any typos here, uh, that should be good. So we'll go ahead and save the script. And then uh, we'll go here and select Retrieve Data. Now, this is the first time I've run this particular script. And uh, when you do it for the first time, you'll need to authorize uh, what the app is doing. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the script will run. And if everything works, we'll get everything out here. So we've got our version, current time, cached until name, character ID, and so on. OK, so that's, a, that's the, the real simple uh, demo for how to use this. Uh, the pattern is is usually the same. Uh, so, your after you create your authorization object, you can pass it to any call you want. Um, you can reuse these if you like. Uh, there's all they're doing is caching your credentials here and just making it easy to pass them into the various calls. Uh, there's no the, the the state doesn't change here every time you make a call. In fact, if you want to, you could make multiple of these if you need to to track multiple keys, for example. Okay, so that's the simple demo. And then uh, what we've done is. We've also uh, made a uh, API Explorer script, which is a little more uh, complicated. Um, so let me show you that real quick. So uh, we've also shared this link on our, our website as well. Uh, you can pull it down there and take a look. But basically, uh, what this is, so this is a new spreadsheet. It's got, again, a place to put your key, your V code, and your, your character ID. But now it lets you name a function that you want to call and any arguments you want to pass to it. And then what it'll do is it'll take the response from that uh, call and uh, write it into the cells here and, and sort of uh, traverse the object tree and write everything out. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the, the code for this, and then I'll show you how it works. So there's a couple pieces here. The, the, f the first piece on top is the same as before. I just made a simple menu uh, that lets us call a function when we need to. Uh, then I wrote a pretty printer which basically takes a row and a column and an object and recursively traverses the object tree to write everything out. Uh, so uh, you can take a look at that if you want. And then finally, the, the load data method is very similar to the one in the, the more simple spreadsheet. So I pull out the key and the V code and the character ID. Uh, but I also pull out the function name and arguments. Uh, and then I create a authorization key. Uh, and then uh, down here, I do a little bit of JavaScript uh, surgery to uh, make a call to whatever function I specified, uh, and then take the response from that, and then just dump it to the pretty printer. Um, this particular example, by the way, is uh, already connected to the library. Uh, you could check that by going to Resources, Libraries, and you'll see it's already there. Uh, and so if you make a copy for yourself, it should also stay connected to the library. So you should be able to, to uh, mess with this uh, if you want to. OK, so to do an example, let's go back to our sheet here. And then I'll copy my credentials over. And then for a function, uh, I'll show you the one I just called. So we can call char sheet and then retrieve data. And again, you'll have to authorize the first time you run it. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks good. And the script will run for a second, and then if uh, all goes well, it should dump the whole, there it is, the whole character sheet. So roughly the same thing we did before, uh, except it'll write the type of the, the object first, and then all of its fields. And anytime it finds 
a, a non-trivial object field, it will recursively uh, write that out as well. So the result here was a character sheet. These are all of the fields uh, in the character sheet uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And then skills and skills itself in the character sheet is an array and it writes out all the skill information as well. Um, you could try this for other things. Uh, let's see, let's try another good one. Um, maybe, whoops, wrong section. Maybe uh, assets. I think I call that asset list. There it is, asset list. Okay, so let's uh, let's try our asset list instead and give it a run. And there you go. And again, assets is another example of a, uh, a moderately complex uh, object tree. So the pretty printer is just crawling through. So this this asset here, for example, uh, contains a bunch of other assets, which are here, and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, so um, so you can of course look at the code to get an idea of how the objects are structured, uh, but you could also just use this uh, tool here. It's pretty convenient for just playing around and and sorting out what the data looks like. Um, be careful about uh, the cell formats here. Uh, sometimes the cell formats can get mangled and end up uh, doing strange things to values. So uh, I usually go and uh, set everything to plain text uh, when I start here. Uh, otherwise, uh, it should work out just fine. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you uh, have any comments or questions, or especially bug reports, uh, I'd love to hear if anything's broken for anybody. Uh, you can track us down on the forums. We're, we're fairly active there. Uh, you can also go straight to the EveKit website and send us feedback there. Um, and Or, you know, if you're on GitHub, you can also uh, open defects against a, uh, the, um, the GitHub project uh, for this as well. Uh, that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye.